Hey guys, this is Ryan with This Smart House, and today I'm coming at you from a kind of rainy, crummy day here in Kansas City. We basically had about a week's worth of rain, and so I'm finally got an opportunity to get out and kind of enjoy the weather a little bit. I'm coming at you today from my electric skateboard, just because it was a good opportunity to get out of the house for a little bit. So today's video has nothing to do with electric skateboarding, uh, but what it does have to do with is cryptocurrency. And I'm not giving you guys any financial advice or anything like that. Uh, the point of today's video is to show you everybody how you can track your crypto and your investments in Home Assistant. Now, like a lot of Americans, uh, I was able to get a couple of refund checks during the pandemic time. Well, I spent my first refund check on this electric skateboard. <laughs> um, but subsequent checks, I was able to invest some of it in both the stock market and some cryptocurrency. So I wanted a way that I could track my portfolio without having to log into my Robinhood account every single time I wanted to check on it. So what I ended up doing was finding a way in Home Assistant to add the stock tickers and do some mathematical changes to it and be able to show exactly how much money that my portfolio is worth at this time. So uh, on today's video, I'm gonna show you how to set up a custom component that will let you track your crypto and your standard stock portfolio in Home Assistant, and then show you some tips and tricks on how to create template sensors that will show you the value and then how to graph those inside of Home Assistant. Stay tuned and let's get started. All right, so the first thing that we need to look into is our data sources for our financial data. Right now I get my data from Yahoo Finance because it's got an open API that doesn't require any authentication and there's not really a rate limit set up on it right now. It's right now about, about the best source to pull your data from. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do is go ahead and navigate over to the Yahoo Finance webpage and look up the stock tickers and symbols for what you're wanting to track. Now, I have a couple of examples here, so let's pop over. So go out to Yahoo Finance, so finance.yahoo.com, and then up here at the top, you can search for the different tickers you want. So if you wanna look for Microsoft, for example, it'll be MSFT, so make sure you write that down. Google, G-O-G. -G. So if you're doing things like crypto, then you would do, so if you're looking for like, say, uh, Bitcoin, you'll notice that Bitcoin is listed with each currency that it relates to. So it's gonna show you Bitcoin to US dollar, or if you were to type in BTC, you'd see all the available ones. So if you wanted to do Bitcoin to Canadian, if you wanted to do Bitcoin versus the Euro, you can do all those on here and that will show you those particular tickers. So if I would search for that, then it would show me what Bitcoin is equivalent in US dollars. So again, that's the ticker you're gonna to need to grab here. Um, I've got some examples here on screen of some additional ones that you, if you wanted to try to search them as well, like, te like Tesla, Microsoft, Pfizer, Doge, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. So now that we have our stock ticker symbol, we need to go ahead and install the custom component to allow us to display that in Home Assistant. So now that we have our stock and crypto ticker symbols, we need to jump in to Home Assistant and install a custom component required to pull that data from Yahoo Finance. Uh, if you click on the link that I have here on the screen, uh, it'll send you to the Yahoo Finance custom component by GitHub user IPRAC. Now this is a really simple and easy to use custom component that we will use to grab the data from Yahoo Finance. So um, installing it is dead simple. You can either use hacks or here in a second, I'll show you how to do it manually. Once you do that, you need to drop a section in your configuration.yaml to specify which symbols you want. And then there's some additional configuration. For example, how often do you want the stock ticker to be updated? Uh, do you wanna show the trending icons? How many decimal places do you care about? And then you can also adjust target currencies on certain types of symbols that have that uh, capability. And then you can also disable and enable a bunch of other options on here. So the first thing we'll need to do is grab all of the code here. So we'll go ahead and click here and download the zip file. We'll go ahead and save it. And once that's finished downloading, go ahead and crack it open and you'll need to navigate to your Home Assistant instance. Um, I'm gonna be using the, uh, at the Samba plugin so I can connect to it in my Windows Explorer. So now that we're in here, we'll go to the config directory, custom components, and then let me open that zip file. And according to the documentation, we just need to make sure that all of the files that are in the custom components, Yahoo Finance, need to be drugged into the same directory in Home Assistant. Sure you got this. So open that up, go to custom components, Yahoo Finance, and we'll just go ahead and drag this entire folder here into our Samba share. 
All right, so after we drop in our new custom component, we need to reboot Home Assistant first. I just This just caught me as I was trying to do it. It won't let you put the custom component in and the configuration.yaml changes and then reboot after that. So let's go ahead and reboot after the first dropping in of the custom component. Now that that's done, we need to open up our config.yaml and add in that little bit of code to allow us to utilize the Yahoo Finance. Right here, I will copy that text from here. Then we will paste that back in the empty area in your configuration.yaml. And then of course you're gonna need to customize your, your symbols here. So in my case, I'll put Microsoft, Google, Bitcoin to US dollar, and Doge to US dollar. Now in addition, you can speed up the refresh time where it pulls data. Right now in the documentation, it states that the scan interval is, so it's set to a default value of six hours, which if you're tracking stocks and crypto is kind of a long time to get data. So I'd recommend up upping this to something like 30 minutes um, or an hour. You can go down as far as 30 seconds, according to the documentation, but I would probably recommend against that because that might get you in trouble with Yahoo. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this optional configuration and I will set mine to 30 minutes just so I can get a more reasonable refresh rate. Oops, I have that. There we go. So I just made a mistake there. So here's the correct. So scan interval, minutes 30, got that. All right, now let's check configuration and we'll restart again. Now that Home Assistant has started again, let's pop over into developer tools and let's look for sensor dot. And there we go. So now you'll see, you'll have entries for each of those items that you included in your list there. So in my case, um, I've got Bitcoin, US dollar. I've got Doge in US dollar. Wow, that's taking a fall. Um, Google's and Microsoft's. So now each of these sensors are now available to me in Home Assistant and I can go ahead and create a graph for them. Here in the next section, I'll show you how to actually apply a value for how much, say if you own 100 shares of Google, good for you, <laughs> then you can show exactly how much money that that is for you. So uh, let's go look at that here in the next section. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and get these added into our Home Assistant configuration uh, so we can see them in a graph. So I will create a new view and we'll call this one Finance and add a new card, uh, graph card. So we'll change this to be sensor and let's look at Bitcoin costs. So there we go. Now you'll notice that this is flatlined right now. That's because it doesn't go back to previous hours or minutes of data. It actually just pulls it in at the moment in time. So you obviously you can't pull down historical data for what it is. So from this moment forward, you'll start seeing your uh, the graph changes it changes every 30 minutes as it refreshes itself. So I could actually go in here and run the manual refresh um, function and it would show me if the price has changed, which is pretty volatile, so it would change. So so that's a quick way of getting a, a nice graph showing up in your home assistant with your crypto amount. So here I'm gonna show you how to create a template sensor and that template sensor will then allow you to display the actual value of your amount of shares of that particular stock. So. So let's pop back over to here and this will be a sensor. So I'll need to open my sensor, sensors.yaml down here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to, so we'll create a helper. So I'll go into configuration helpers and add helper uh, text. Now I know there's an option in there for number, but we can't use that because it won't support decimals. So we're gonna go ahead and use a text field. So we'll call this one shares doge and you can give it a custom icon if you want, but we're just gonna create one real quick and that's gonna be a text field that we can input the number of shares that we have for that one and then do some math on it to make that work. So I'm gonna pop into here, go into finance, and we'll go ahead and add that into our dashboard under as an entity. Let's call this one uh, input. So it's an input text, shares doge, okay. Now I can click on this and I can go up here and I can say, so say I've got 50 shares of Doge, so maybe we just do 50.5, so we can do a, and there we go. Now, we have a, a variable to hold the number of shares that we have of our particular stock. All right, so now we wanna do a little bit of math on this. So let's go into the developer tools, templates, and go ahead and clear out all this information here. 
So the quickest way for you to do this is jump back over into your Home Assistant and then just find those states and take the value from there. So we're gonna do input. So we wanna find that input text right here. And that's our, we're gonna grab that value, go back into our template, and we're going to put this in parentheses, states dot input select, input text dot shares underscore doge dot state. And then close that out. So you'll notice, so that outputs a number and we need to make sure that even though it says up here that result type is number, we need to make sure it's treating it as a floating point. So we're gonna go ahead and add pipe float to it so it acts as a number. Then we're going to multiply that by the sensor.yahoofinance doge USD. So this is the current value of doge in dollars. And then we're gonna paste that here. And we need again do parentheses states dot sensor dot yahoo finance underscore doge underscore usd dot state and of course that doesn't work because we need to make sure we treat it as a float and there we go now we have the actual value of our shares in dollars now obviously if you wanted to round this to you know we typically deal with currency in um, two different digits so, so if you want to round this over here all you need to do is go to the go ahead and contain your entire formula inside of parentheses and then inside of these outside parentheses we need to use another pipe and round and then give it the number of digits you want to round to so in this case we need to round to two and since i didn't get that around the whole thing it didn't work so let's get that now if you look my entire statement is contained in another set of parentheses and those parentheses has been given pipe round two so now my value is actually showing in what will be equivalent to dollars so we want to go ahead and grab this, make sure to keep this open, and then we will add that to as a template sensor in Home Assistant. So I'll go ahead and paste that in here just so we don't forget it. So I'm going to paste in here. We'll replace that with the correct one. All right. So I will have all of these uh, example code listed out on my blog post if you look at the link here below. Uh, it's also linked in the description, obviously. Uh, but the way you do this is a template sensor. So Platform is template, the sensor value. So we're going to call it value doge. And then we have make sure you get your indents correct there because this gets kind of wonky if you don't. So the value template's that exact same template we used, we showed in the last bit. We'll set the unit of measurements to dollars. Obviously, if you're doing this in another currency, set this to your currency value here. A quick tip if you wanted to paste in something like uh, pound or yen or wong as your symbol here. You can just go to Google and search for pound symbol ASCII. You can usually, will, you will find it typed in somewhere. You can just copy that and then paste it in as long as it's text. And then that way you don't have to try to figure out the ASCII key or code for it. All right, so now that that's all done, we're gonna go ahead and hit save. We'll pop back into Home Assistant to make sure this worked out fine. Check, make sure I didn't make any errors, and then we can go and restart it. And while this is restarting, um, the last thing I'm gonna show you is a custom component that you can install that creates a much nicer graphing interface. And I'll show you an example of what it looks like in my normal Home Assistant instance, uh, where it's actually gonna have some data in there from my stocks and things like that. So uh, real quickly, let's go ahead and show you how to set up this custom component that puts in a better, better what they call a mini graph, and then I'll show you what the final graph looks like after we're done. So now that everything's back up and functional, Let's go out and find the Home Assistant mini graph. Right. So as you can see here, the mini graph, it's, so, it's a far superior graph to what is built into the Home Assistant Loveless UI. So um, again, it's available as a Hacks um, installer, but you can also very quickly just add this uh, bundle.js to your config database directory. So let's go ahead and go up here and grab, yeah, you, so actually there's some, a quick installer here just if you want to do it via command line. So if you want to use Telnet, you can do that as well. But I'll just show you how to do it in a standard download. All right, so for the manual install, uh, we need to click on the latest release and go ahead and download. Right here is the, the .js file. So you can just right click on that and say save link as and then save it to your downloads. And then again, we're going to open back up our configuration directory and www and we'll drag this file into there to upload it. And then we need to go into our Home Assistant instance, click on the three dots, edit dashboard, click on those three dots, go to manage resources, and we need to add this module right here, slash local, slash mini, dash graph, dash card, dash bundle, dot JS as a JavaScript module. Hit update, close out of that, overview, 
and you need to, it's not going to show up here yet, but you need to restart Home Assistant to have it show up in that custom card list. So configurations, restart. So after we've rebooted, let's go ahead and click in here. We'll hit edit dashboard, click add card and go to custom mini graph card. If you don't see this here, make sure you refresh your browser. A reboot doesn't take care of it automatically. You also have to refresh your browser. So then in here, we're going to add in entities. So the proper format would be entities and then each of the entities you wanna go down through here with. You can also customize a bunch of different components on here. You can change the custom name, you can change the color of it, what unit it is, a whole bunch of different things. You can also set it to if you do want it to fill in or not want to fill in, if you want to have it display the graph or not the graph or the lines or change the adaptive colors, but it makes a much nicer graph here and then allows you to see all the individual data points inside of this one. Obviously, there's nothing here, but let me switch over to my Home Assistant instance and I'll show you what it looks like with actually some populated data. You'll see here, this one down here, the total stock value. These are where there's some actual data points in here and you can tell at what time of day, what the value was. So it allows you to have a lot more extended information than that you would normally have just with the built-in Home Assistant graph. All right, so there you go. Um, now you have the ability to add in any stock ticker or crypto that you wanna track, and place it in Home Assistant and display it with a nice pretty graph so you can see the, the historical data and how your stocks and crypto are doing. Um, hopefully this was a helpful video for you. This actually was inspired by a post on the Home Assistant subreddit where a user had asked about this and I had already put this together for me just because I started getting into crypto. So I put it together and gave him a quick description. I thought, hey, it'd be good to go ahead and get a video together. If you wanna see more videos like this, um, just please let me know in the comments or on my social media platforms, what type of video you'd like me to do in the future. Now, please, if this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and ring the notification bell for new videos. I got, I'm gonna have a lot of new videos actually out this summer, as I said before. Um, so please uh, make sure you're subscribed for all the new content coming. Thank you again for your time and have a wonderful day.